that this very one fractional index. One would consider this very aspect of the law of indices. And don't forget we have treated other laws. We have looked at zero index, we have looked at the power of one, we have looked at negative exponent, and we have looked at power law to raise a power to a power. We have looked at that aspect. Now, let us not consider this one, the one that has to do with fractional index or fractional power or fractional exponent. Okay, don't forget we still maintain our base S. It means that we are going to take the power in fractional form. We are going to take the power in fractional form, meaning the power will contain a fraction. Let me use n, for example, and I will use n, okay? I will use n as the numerator and n as the denominator, okay? For the fraction, for the one of the power. Okay, the x still remains the base. Please don't forget. S to the the base. Now we now have the fraction as the power. Okay? It means that for this one, this very one simply means x power n, and we have 1 over n outside. You know this one has to do with deal with the power law. We have two powers. It means that we multiply the two of them, and then we have this. Or we can Consider it as this s power 1 over n and our n will be outside. Okay, when you still multiply the two powers, okay, we are going to have this very one. It means that this one is a, a equal to this very two, either equal to this or equal to this. Then when we resolve this very two, we are going to arrive at the same point. We are going to obtain the same result. So let me consider this very one first s power n over okay let me see okay the one we have there is s power n inside n is out inside and we have one over n outside okay this is what we have this is what we have okay we are going to look at this very one first we are going to look at this very one first it means that for this one it simply uh, means that we should take the n root n n root of the one in brackets. And the one in bracket is x power n. x power n. Please don't forget that. The one in bracket is simply what? x power n. We have to take the n roots of this very one. Okay, let me also look at the second part. We have x power 1 over n. The fraction is inside and the n is outside. It means that for this one, we have to take the n root of the base, which is the x. It means that I have to take the n root of the base, which is the x, while the n, remember, is outside. It's outside the bracket. Okay, it means that for this, if I consider this very problem in this form, I will arrive at the same point. Okay, let me now use the number to represent that. I want to use the number to represent. Okay, let me say x power 2 over 3, for example. And don't forget that. This very one can also be written as a squared, and I will have 1 over 3 outside. 1 over 3 outside. When I multiply this, I will have the same thing, the same thing. Meaning, when I multiply 2 uh, to the head, the first power, and the second one to the fraction, I will have 2 over 3. Okay? Meaning, I can also consider this very one in another way. I can also consider it like this 1 over. That is it. Sorry, uh, 8 power, 8 power 1 over 3. 8 power 1 over 3. And I will have I will have square outside. Square outside. Okay, can you see now that this very one can be this or it can be this? Now let me now resolve each of them and I'm going to have the same results. I will obtain the same answer. Okay, for this one I have 8 square and uh, we have 1 over 3 outside. 1 over 3 outside as the second power. Okay, now remember what I said in the first one, ALC, that uh, this one, the first part, take the end root. Note that the end is denominator here. And what is the denominator here? 3. You need to take the t root of a squared. Take the t root, the 3 roots of a squared. And a squared is what? 
a square is what? What, what is this a times square? A square simply means you multiply a two times. A two times, and I'm going to have 64. And what can you multiply three times? What number can you multiply three times into 64? Therefore, it's simply four. It's simply four. It means that when you multiply four three times, you have a 64. And you say four times four times four. You are going to have 64. Therefore, multiplying four three times, it will definitely give 64. Therefore, the result will be four. Okay, let me consider the second one. That very one. Okay, we have the fraction inside. We have the fraction inside and the square in the outside. You need that for this one, I will simply take the three roots of the base, which is the eight. Okay, and the square is outside. The square is outside. Okay, now what the three roots or the ten root of eight? What can you multiply three times to give eight? Simply two times two times two. You mean that the answer to this one, okay, you mean for this one in bracket, the answer, the one in bracket is going to be two. Then we can multiply two, three times to give a eight. You mean that the third root of eight is going to be what two. And the third root of 64 will be what four for this very first one. This one, the third root of eight will be two. Therefore, I'm going to have two squares. Two squares simply mean multiply two, two times. I will have four. Do you see? We have the, the same result. I told you earlier that whenever you are resolving this very one, either to this or to this, you are going to have a common result. Thank you for joining me on this platform, the Jumbo Online Mathematics. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mathematics Science Mega Tutorial. All the best.